now we're moving toward a, a more formal definition of, of the derivative. Um, and remember, the language we were using in the last class was the derivative uh, is essentially, not essentially, is exactly instantaneous rate of change at a point. So the idea is that if, if, if the average rate of change as a function, at any function, and I choose you know, some point, uh, let's say some point A here, and some other point A plus H, rate of change is the slope of the secant. But what we're talking about is the instantaneous rate of change. Uh, we're letting this distance h, we're letting this distance h here, as opposed to zero. So for instantaneous rate of change, given you know, a similar function of A plus H is A plus H is very close to A because we're letting H approach zero, or in terms of the limits, we're saying the limit as H approaches zero. And uh, when H gets close to zero, the secant line becomes a tangent. idea that we're going to be wrestling with in the next couple of days is, is how do we let H approach zero? So we're going to be talking about some approximation ideas now uh, and moving toward uh, later on actually do letting H get close to zero in a much more mathematical way. Uh, so you know, language-wise, derivative is, uh, this should start becoming very uh, automatic now, the instantaneous how we write it. Here's how we say it. Uh, another way, dy dx. Let's say dy dx. Four ways of writing the derivative. F prime of x. F prime of x. Now, but why are there so many different ways of writing the derivative? Language things. It, it, this probably seems very foreign to you at this point. It's like whenever you hear Spanish or, or French or Chinese or, or any of the languages that you're studying. The first time you hear it, it seems really difficult. It'll become second nature to you over time. Uh, but this, this page is just looking at vocabulary. It's first of all saying that the derivative is instantaneous rate of change. How here are different ways of writing the derivative and how we say what it means. Because you know, this is 
this is starting to look familiar. The derivative, so I'll say like f prime of x, y prime, y px, which is d dx of f of x. These are all different ways of just writing the derivative. This equals the limit as h versus 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. This is the limit definition of derivative. And I believe graphically what's going on, once again, this is something that we've kind of seen a bunch of times. You know, I choose at some point a, at some point a plus h. And if we let value h get close to zero, then we are looking at the instantaneous rate of change at x equal to a. So how do we let x H approach zero. Well, for now, we're just going to choose a small value of h. So let's, let's look at this example problem. It says find the derivative of this function when x equals 3, uh, and then find the derivative of the tangent function. So let's first find the derivative. So we know that sine dy dx of f of x equals x squared and x equals 3. So we need to let h approach zero. So let's just choose a small, small value for h. So let's let h equal 0 0.1. That's a small value. We could say 0 0.001, 0 0.0001. 0 uh, but for now, this is close enough. It, it, it gets to the idea. Uh, graphically, what's going on? Well, we've got y equals x squared. We've got x, x is 3, y is 9. Now we're looking point three point one and we need to know what is the corresponding y value there. Well, if you can't do that in your head, you know we can say what is three what is three point one squared? squared equals 9.61. So when x equals 3.1, the y is 9.61. And again, we got that from just using our calculator. So now to find the derivative, we, we, find, we find the slope between these two points. And we're using this right here. So f of a plus h. Well, our a value is 3. We have the point 3. Uh, so f of a plus h is 9.61 minus f of a is 9 over h 0 0.1. And, and again, all we're doing is we're finding the slope between the two points. This is just the change in y over the change in x. That's all we're doing. Like the derivative, the instantaneous rate of change, is just finding the slope between two points that are very close to each other. So this equals 6.1. Now what is that? That is the slope between these two infinitely close points. And if I wanted to find an equation for the tangent, This problem in the last video, an equation for the tangent line. Equation is y equals m x minus x1 plus y1. And we know the slope. The slope we found is 6.1. And we know these points. We can choose either one of the points. Let's choose you know, the easier one, 3 and 9. So filling that in. This equals the slope of the instantaneous rate of change, 6.1, and 
x minus 3 plus snow. And that is, this is the equation for the tangent plus. And let's see what they look like on a graph. So let's, let's graph this tangent line. graph the tangent line with the function itself. So if we go into y equals, we're looking at the function y equals x squared, and we also want to graph the tangent line with it, 6.1 times x minus 3 plus 9, and if we graph this, change our zoom. So I'll do zoom 4. Let's zoom out a little bit. So let's do zoom 6. What we see is that when x equals 3, so 1, 2, 3, our tangent line is essentially the same thing as our curve. So to say that again, um, here's a graph of um, three, my function, y equals x squared, and two blue, graphing my tangent line. And what's going on is that when x equals three, here's when x equals three, in that little region at x equals three, the tangent line is doing a good job approximating the curve. In other words, uh, I'm able to, at, in this red zoomed in area, the tangent line is essentially the same thing as a curve. I've made a curve into a line. Well, um, let's, let's generalize this. So what's the general form of a tangent line in x equals a? Well, the general form of a line, y equals m x minus x1 plus y1. So we're choosing, this is totally general, so we're saying, you know, let's choose the point at A. Here's the point. So x equals A, y equals F of A. So we can take x1 equals A, y1 equals F of A. So I found this, I found that. Now I need to find the slope. Well, the slope. So the instantaneous rate of change is what we've looked at. The limit is h approaches zero, where h is this value here. So a plus h. So the slope is the limit is h approaches zero of the, of the, the slope of those two points. Of a plus h, that's y2, minus y1, all over the change in x. a plus h minus a is h. So this is my slope. So therefore, I can generalize the general form of the tangent line would be y equals m, like the limit, is h approaches 0. F of A plus H minus F of A all over H. So that's my M. So X minus A plus F of A. So complicated looking, complicated looking equation. But you know, this term is that term here, the limit term, that's my slope. is my x1 value, and f of a is my y1 value. So uh, here's the general form of the tangent line, and we're going to do some more work with this in the next video. So, uh, so we'll see you next time.